Cross took him out of bounds. And it remains 7 0 Philadelphia. First down, Eagles at their own nine and a half yard line. They lead the Giants 7 0. Bubby Brister showing a little of his enthusiasm, banging guys on the head. On the other side, Dan Reeves and Dave Brown. And this is where Bubby Brister would sure like to get some running going. You know, both these teams, like we said earlier, wanted to be able to run the ball today. And so far, the, the quarterbacks of both teams are the leading rusher. Bubby Brister uh, is the leading rusher for the Eagles and Dave Brown for the Giants. And Bubby Brister wants that to change on this drive if they're going to get that ball out of here. He has Herschel Walker and Charlie Garner behind him. Garner started off with a flourish and then sort of disappeared. And here's Brister to throw him. Walker. Uh, he's taken down by Marcus Buckley. After a pickup of five or six, maybe. The Eagles' first four possessions, they punted three times. It's a touchdown as a result of the interception by Zordich. Second and five. They got five on the pass completion to Walker. Nice fake of this. That's Garner. Outside the 15 for a couple. Stopped by Eric Howard and Stacy Dillard. Well, that's the one thing that this giant defense does well is 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 a defensive line really they take on all the blockers and then they try and free up the linebackers and that's their job with these guys here take on the line and don't let the blockers get to these guys right here and then they'll come in and make the tackle you know don't allow anything always have a free linebacker and they play that perfectly third and three First down to Garner. He doesn't catch. Looked like it knocked him down. He passes. <laughs> Looked like it threw it so yep. hard it knocked Charlie Garner down. Aflac trivia question of this week. Where is, where on the Liberty Bell is the crack actually located? Where on the Liberty Bell is the crack actually located? On the bell, I guess. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, but where on the bell? Is it at the bottom of the bell, the middle of the bell, or the top of the bell? I think there's a question. <laughs> okay. The middle well, of the part, bell. Yeah, okay. Brister trying to set up the screen. Does to Walker. Walker hit down by Carlton Bailey. <laughs> yeah, it's like trivia question again. Where on the Liberty Bell is the crack actually located and you picked the middle yep i mean the bottom no i picked the middle yeah i picked the i, I picked the bottom that's not the crack now. no that's not the crack either that's not the crack either that's not the crack oh, right here here's where it starts right there see that little line there that's the crack that they talk about i, I so, learned a, a, again just traveling with you you can learn a lot by traveling well, what happened, yeah, I mean, you learn a lot about bells and stuff, too. But everyone thinks it's that bottom and stuff. That's just to take pressure off the top where the crack really was. Brister fell down on the handoff to Walker, but got the ball to him, nevertheless, for a couple of yard gain. Carlton Bailey again on the stop. You know, when we were talking to Bubby Brister yesterday, he says that when he played a year ago, you know, he didn't have... Fred Barnett and he said so he just kind of made a living throwing to that guy Calvin Williams number 89 and throwing to Bavaro and to Herschel Walker yep. and thus far I mean he's, 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 he's thrown one to Fred Barnett one pretty good one but thus far that's what he's really doing is getting the ball to those guys or two of those guys anyway out of the spread formation Brister this is caught by Fred Barnett and that gets the Eagles a first down Corey Raymond on a stop, but Brister had a scramble, but got it there. There's a fiery guy. There's a guy who plays quarterback like he's a nose tackle. 
Look, he wants more now. That you know, sometimes you just need something like that to to get yourself going and to get everyone else going. I think he stays in the hurry of offense. Yeah, I, th I think that that his his motor goes 110 all the time. That's the thing. It, Rich Kotite says that. All the players say that. It's not getting Bobby Brister fired up. The job is to get Bobby Brister calmed down. down. First down. Eagles at their own 35. And Brister fakes. And he's going deep. No flag. Yes, sir. here comes a flag. And here comes another flag. And there's Mike Zordich down there, number 36. He was calling for it. Mike Zordich ran about 50 yards to call for that pass interference against the Giants. Football today, I just throw 15 of those a game. You know, oh, yeah. you get 10 penalties. Throw it high and deep, and hope for a completion or a penalty. Best play there is. I like the way they do it. They're encouraging this. Call against John Booty. Here it is. It just goes. You're going to see the, the outside receiver. Here's number 41, John Booty. Who they call it on, and Barnett gets behind Booty, and Booty turns, and he's looking back at the ball, and he doesn't he doesn't look at the ball. He he's looking at the ball all the way, and then he puts his arm up there. Now I don't know that that should be against Booty, because he was looking back for the ball. He put his arm up there, and Fred Barnett grabbed his arm. Reverse to Calvin Williams. To about the 18, where he's taken down and knocked out of bounds by Thomas Randolph. Yeah, I think the Giants got a bad call on that one. Because, you know, you know, he was looking for the ball. He just put his arm up there, and his arm was grabbed. Yeah, let's look again. Watch it again. Here's booty number 41. See, he's looking at the ball, which is okay. He puts his arm up there, and then Barnett hits him in the head, and then it grabs his face mask. But I would think if there's something there, it should go against Fred Barnett. The 41-yard gain for the Eagles as a result of that. Flags again as the Giants jump. Hand off to Garner. Pushing going on, and another flag comes flying in. And when you see an official throw a hat, that means he's run out of flags and stuff. I believe that's Charlie Garner who's still down. Official without a hat? No, it's not Garner, is it? It is Garner, I beg your pardon. He's been hurt off and on since training camp. He hurt his ribs to begin with, and that wouldn't get well. He finally came back against the Falcons and ran the wrong way on the first play of the game and fumbled on the second and then disappeared again. Well, you know, he has that, that rib. They call it a, a rib injury, but it's like, like the first rib, and it's right up there where that trainer has his hand right now. It's right up there behind his shoulder. And sometimes you just you just get this by just getting hit. And you're going to watch him here. I mean, he just puts his head down and hits, and maybe just that contact there does it. Defense, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 89, offense. By rule, the major penalty will be enforced. He will go back 15 yards, second down. You're going to see there's the offsides by number 75, Keith Hamilton. Then 89 is Calvin Williams. He's right there. You're going to, oh, Sparks punched him first. And it's always the guy yep. who, who punches second. Sparks punches Williams, or Williams punches back at Sparks. So they throw the penalty on Calvin Williams. And then, of course, you know, we still have the injury to Charlie Garner. And the 15-yard penalty will be marked off. That's Garner. And it looked like it was his knee when we looked at the yep. replay. It wasn't that upper rib or shoulder area. It was the knee. And the way they're carrying him and putting him in that cart, it does look like the knee. But we have the injury on one play to Garner. Left knee. We have the 15-yard penalty against Calvin Williams. 
you see it. It was his left leg. You see the knee right there. That's where that's where he got it right there. Whoop. I think he got it twice. I yep. think he got it when it was first planted and then got it again. Well, that tells you the story. Charles Garner. Back at Veterans Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden, second and 19, the Eagles back at their own 32 after the penalty was marked off against them. Herschel Walker is the lone back. Brister <laughs> deflected, intended for Walker. Yeah, you know, we're seeing more and more of that. I mean, we're seeing more and more of those penalties downfield on those uh, deep passes. We're also seeing more and more of the balls and knock down at the line of scrimmage where rushmen just start and, you know, and just take up lanes and take away throwing lanes. And that's up to the quarterback to yeah, find those lanes. The quarterback has to find a lane because the the rushers are are just going to get their hands up. So you got to throw in the lanes between rushers. You're not going to be able to throw through or over rushers. Third and 19. Brister. Bavaro to about the 13 and very near a first down for the Eagles. Navarro's an amazing player. You know, it's amazing that he's even playing this game now, but we remember all those years with the Giants where he was always open, and as we said earlier, Bubby Brister was, was so happy that Bavaro was playing because he's a guy that, against a zone, has a good feel yeah. for where the other guys are, and he's always going to take you off the hook. He'll always find a lane and an area for you to throw in. Didn't get the first down, so Eddie Murray will try from 32 yards out and hit from that distance and the Eagles will lead it 10 nothing ex Philadelphia Eagle coach Dick Vermeil who will be honored at the half yeah that's his wife right there in the red his wife Carol, Carol. both Dick and uh, Carol came on the on the bus before the game and it was good to see him Dick Vermeil was an outstanding coach here for the Philadelphia Eagles and before that yep. at UCLA and now he's with ABC and everywhere he's ever been the guy just gives everything he has and is enthusiastic and emotional about it. And well, he still is. Yeah. Some yeah. of the ex-players uh, around him. There's Tom Brookshire who I used to work with for so long but he didn't play for Dick Vermeil, but they're very good buddies now. Uh, but you talk about great Eagles and great players and tough guys tough. and guys that have been honored here before. That's Tom Brookshire. I remember, I think, I remember when he played for the Eagles. I always thought that Tom Brookshire was the toughest defensive back that I had ever seen. I remember he hit me in the head so hard once it broke the helmet. His or yours? Mine. <laughs> and he asked me what I was doing playing. <laughs> The ultimate insult. Wilkins kicked off his handle at the 50 by Megan. 35. Ball came loose. The Giants got it back. You know, one thing that Rich Kotite said yesterday, he said, you know, you lose five in a row. And he said the one of the first things to go that you always watch out for is special teams. He said, but our special teams have been excellent. He said, our guys are running downfield. They're hitting. They're making things happen. He said, we have never lost that. And he said, if you don't lose that, you always have a chance. And I agree with that. Rich Kotite's had a tough time. They've been under attack. A lot of verbal abuse, but he's hung tough. Dave Brown comes out of the pocket. Brown to the 40. He was pressured early. And there's an injured eagle down on the play. Yeah, and this this whole story for the Giants is not being able to get a running game going, and because Dave Brown is maturing as a quarterback, but he's not mature enough to take it all on his shoulders. That's William Fuller who's down. He put the early pressure on Dave Brown. 
Moore has a lot of sacks this year. In yeah. fact, he, he was uh, voted to the.